the way we do that is that we have to find different ways to verify data, but within a cultural context. And we have to forget and leave the idea behind that there is such thing as one single truth because there is no such thing as truth because everything is culturally, uh, it's based on the context of a culture. And so to help people understand what is data, you can't just assume that logic, like just give someone the information, the facts, that doesn't work because you have to learn how to speak the language of the people, not just language like you know English or Spanish, but you have to understand the cultural background of how to deliver that information and how to engage in a conversation. And that means you can't just rely on quantitative information. That means you can't just rely on logic. This is not just about showing more statistics and math and showing what's right, what's wrong, because the very reason why we are in this problem is because you have one group saying this is right, and then you have another group saying this is wrong, and everyone wants to say that this is the truth. And what we need to have is a way to understand, let's go past the numbers and understand the context, and then we can bring it all together, numbers and the thick data, the qualitative information. There is a massive skill set that's missing when it comes to analyzing data. Right now, when you go to school, you either are forced to choose hardcore engineering, hard sciences, or either you're a computer programmer, you're an engineer, and usually these fields are dominated by men. And then you have the soft skills where it's like communication, history, humanities, literature, anthropology, and that's all on the soft skill side. And that's a really big problem because this side works on the qualitative data, and this side works on the quantitative data. So when people graduate, they go and they look for jobs. You have all these people who say, we're so good at math and we're going to give you more numbers. And then you have all these people who say, we're so good at stories and we're going to give you more stories about people. But what we need to do is say both sides need to learn about the other. The you know, hard sciences people need to understand how to gather stories. And the people who are on the story side and the history side, they actually need to understand data as quantitative. And so we need to integrate those skills. And that's why my company, Set and Compass, would teach companies how to do what we call integrated data thinking, which is a new movement that uh, we are you know, trying to spread around the world, which is to say that policymakers from education and people and jobs, they need to start teaching this new skill set, which is integrating the quantitative and the qualitative. And that's what we call integrated data thinking, which is a new skill for the 21st century for how to better analyze data. And that's not just numbers, it's not just stories, it's actually a combination of both. It's not. Big data is not, I'll be the first to say something very controversial. Big data by itself will not improve humanity or our social life, if anything, it can make our lives worse. We've already seen that because that's what happens when you only make decisions based on numbers. We need to have the qualitative input to understand why, what are these numbers telling us? Why does the statistic mean this? You know, why are people saying this or doing this? So it's very dangerous to make decisions just based on one kind of data input. So big data by itself will not improve the problems that we are facing as a humanity, but it can improve when it's combined with what I call thick data, that was densos, which is to say it's the qualitative, you know, the qualitative, all the stories and the emotions of people. I see that China is big and there's a lot of people, so it's going to be growing. I see that in the context of right now, that in my country, the United States, is a declining empire and it is losing its power as losing its economic power, but it's also retreating from the global stage from bringing people together. And so I see that China will only be increasing in power and that's why I'm really interested in spending more time in Latin America. I just moved to Peru. I'm, that's why I'm in Chile because I think that we need to strengthen another region of the world so that you know, for us to have a peaceful earth, a peaceful world, we can't, it's never a good idea only to have one empire be the only dominant one. China will be the most powerful, it will have the most economic power, but it means that other regions also need to be powerful enough to engage and get the best out of China so that they can be 
self-determining and have their own agency. And that's why I'm really interested in spending more time in bridging my interest between China, America, and now South America to strengthen the, this region's role on the world stage. I think that's a complicated question. It will hopefully, uh, Actually, you already see China and South America working very closely together. And I think these are two regions of the world who know that being collaborative is better than being separate. And I see that already you see very close relationships between China and Chile and China and Venezuela. So I think that, you know, we're going to see a better future. But that requires for South America to strengthen their own point of view and so that they can determine their future and they can meet China halfway and not just kind of do what Africa has done, which is that essentially China has gone in and created really great investment in infrastructure. But we have to be honest that it's not always at the benefit of what the countries in, in Africa want. And I don't want to see that happen in Latin America. So that's why I'm spending more time here. And I'm really excited why these kinds of events like this are happening right here in Chile. I don't want to say I'm either an optimist or a pessimist, but I do believe that we all need to continue fighting for what we think is right. So I think that hope is what we need in order to continue the, the fight to ensure that you know we have an open internet, that we have open data structures so that we can share information. And what I'll be talking about today, which is that, yes, there's a lot of great innovations in the world that's coming right now with genetics and in science and artificial intelligence, but that means nothing. It means nothing if people don't understand that we own our data and that our data is our property. And that if we don't treat it as property, it means that all these really actually amazing innovations can be used against us. So I believe that you know the world can go really bad this way or really good this way, but what it means is that if in order for us to prevent that path of going down the bad way, it requires education. And right now, in the past, it's taken hundreds of years. And for any time a group of people are oppressed, either by religion, by colonists, you know, Latin America is no stranger to colonizers, by, uh, by any kind of way of thinking, you know, in slavery, that's what we had in the US, right, in many parts of the world. It usually takes hundreds of years to undo the power structures. And right now, we have seen that the rise of big data Data over the last 20 years with the internet and now we can collect enough data to do artificial intelligence but there's a gap between what technology has done and what society understands and in the past it took hundreds and hundreds of years to undo the, the domination of the Catholic Church to undo the domination of you know colonizers that were abusing and killing people and in indigenous populations and now what I think is that it's pretty amazing that we it, the technology has changed so fast but our social understanding hasn't changed yet so that's where the gap is is that if we can change the way people understand data I believe that we can pivot it towards a, a greater you know outcome of potential uh, positive outcomes for our world.